This was a tale of two shows. 75% of it was good to fucking great. The championship matches felt like fights, from the body language to the facial expressions to just the move placement, the way that they told a story. Every single championship match felt different. Even if a couple of them went on a bit too long, there was some really high-level work here, and I take my hat off to them, even though I'm not wearing a goddamn hat. But this was some really, really good shit that shows that the WWE wrestlers, and that's what they are, they're not sports entertainers, they're fucking wrestlers, what they can do, even without a crowd. Even with all the fake crowd noise, they can put on some damn high-level work, and that was really, really good shit. And some of the highlights of WWE programming in 2021, there's just one problem with this show, a black cloud hanging over it in the form of the zombie lumberjack match. It was almost as bad as anything in WCW 2000. I'm convinced that Vince Russo is writing the show again secretly. Yeah, if Vince McMahon, Bruce Prichard, Johnny Ace, Kevin Dunn, or any combination of them came up with this, they deserve to be kicked out of the goddamn company. I hope somebody else buys the goddamn company. NBC, Disney, whatever. And they can take over because fucking hell, at this point, they might as well put cartoon characters because they put fucking zombies there. It was fucking embarrassing. What the fuck was that? I'm John Ruthin with my review, WWE WrestleMania Backlash. But yes, I'm going to have a lot of praise for this show. But get ready, I'm going to have a lot of scorn for the zombie lumberjack match. If you guys liked it, that's fucking great. But I didn't, and I'll tell you why later. Kayla, Rosenberg, Booker, and JBL on the panel. Booker and JBL both said the word crunk. Crunk was a stupid word back then, and it's even worse now. Hearing Booker say it and JBL try to say it. Uh, Sonya joins the panel to talk about Bailey versus Bianca, and, you know, some good stuff there. Rosenberg, we know how a lumberjack match works. And by the way, WWE constantly, you know, explaining to us how a triple threat match works since they had two on this show. Do you know that the champion doesn't have to be involved in the pin to lose her championship? Well, if you fucking didn't, commentators in the kickoff panel and, you know, the video packages told you, well, I don't know, about 80 million goddamn times. And we know how a triple threat match works. Maybe if you're, I don't know, an amoeba. No, an amoeba would actually know what the fuck's going on. Which actually explains why Michael Cole had to say it, because even an amoeba is smarter than Michael Cole on commentary, and smarter than Michael Cole in general. So Sonia then talks about the women's three-way. Oh my. Ziggler and Rude knock Dominic, and then they bury him under a box, and Jamie tried to lift it in a noble effort. Sheamus, uh, Dags, you like Dags? He does an open challenge, but not for the championship. He faces Ricochet in jeans. He was chasing a victory. I will n stop knocking Ricochet about that when he admits that it was wrong to associate with that son of a bitch. And, yeah, oh yeah also, fuck Amber Nova for associating with him, and you, you know why. Anyway, uh, I don't know why Ricochet was in jeans. This was a well-worked match. It might as well have just been on Raw. But Sheamus is pounding him from behind. We get a 450 for two. We get some good stuff, and then he strike one, two, three. They're saving the bro kick for the big matches, and that's fine. So then Ricochet, after being beat clean, even though, yes, Sheamus did attack him before the bell, you could have argued that he wouldn't need to because he was obviously going to beat Ricochet because everybody beats Ricochet. I think I beat Ricochet in a match, and I've never stepped in a goddamn wrestling ring to, you know, in my life. So anyway, I think anybody commenting on this review has beaten Ricochet at some point. Really sad because Ricochet's talented, but uh, decided to go chasing the wrong friendships. So yeah, uh, Ricochet attacks Sheamus and then puts on, oh no, I got, I got your hat, I put on your hat, haha, ha, we're going to have a feud. Hey, he's a sore loser. Good baby face there. So get your vaccine soon. Hey, Drake Wirtz doesn't want you to get your vaccine. He wants you to drop your mask and everything because he's a goddamn piece of shit and a Q believer and everything. And I honestly hope the WWE fires him and his wife takes the kids and leaves him and they go get raised by somebody that actually has a goddamn brain. And maybe Drake will just, I don't know, fade into, ex uh, you know, to like not existing at all. Just like fade into the goddamn background because he was a combat zone failure and he's a failure as a human being. He's a failure as a father. He's a fa because Oh, he's a soldier of Christ. Look, you want to be religious, you fucking be religious. That's not using religion in the right goddamn way. You're supposed to love your neighbor. You're not supposed to spout goddamn Q shit. And Drake Wirtz deserves to be fucking fired. It's one thing to have different beliefs. You can have different beliefs even if they're questionable. He's being harmful to the company, and the company doesn't need any more help being harm, you know, harming their own goddamn image. Philanthropy is the future of marketing. It's the way brands are going to win. Stephanie McMahon, 2015. <coughs> so, uh, Bobby Lashley is more hungrier. Booker does not understand how words work. Boy, anyway, we get an animalistic narration because Batista, Dave Batista, was doing a narration. Um, also, because Army of the Dead is coming out on Netflix. Not that you would know that. They didn't advertise that at all during this, uh, except for very, very, very subtle stuff that pretty much just, you know, was like a hammer to the goddamn head. 
So anyway, we interrupt this video package to bring you another video package. They had all these highlight packages during the kickoff show and decided to do them before, you know, we got to the next match. Rhea versus Asuka versus Charlotte's uh, cow print gear. Let me just say right now, this is really good work. Good work by all of them. Charlotte's a very good athlete when she looks like she wants to care. So as for the Raw Women's Championship, uh, they explained how a triple threat match works again. Fucking goddamn idiots. Um, honestly, I'm sick of Charlotte being involved in the championship scene, and I fear that they're going to try to do a screw job ending with her and, you know, Sonya being involved and the re other referee that Charlotte had words with, like all the referees in her pocket, instead of using Charles Robinson to just complete the fact that they are late uh, 90s, early 2000s WCW. Now they're going to have her, you know, boss a minority around, because a flair bossing a minority around certainly doesn't have any bad tones at all. Um, Charlotte at times was selling fine and other times just didn't seem like she gave a shit. That moonsault is going to break her knees. Uh, Dunn's camera work was horrendous because Kevin Dunn doesn't know what the fuck he's doing because every time he chairs his Bucky Beaver teeth, the camera changes. So that means it changes about 60 times every goddamn 10 seconds. Really jarring. So, um, we get a superplex spot, double superplex spot. Uh, we get double natural selection for two. Um... Oscar locked but fought off. We get riptide on Oscar for three after Charlotte had hit a boot on Oscar but then had fallen off the apron and then riptide one, two, three. And then Rhea's trying to do a taunt and everything. Rhea needs to hold Rhea needs to hold that goddamn championship for a while. She cannot lose it. And I'm not talking SummerSlam. I mean she needs to hold that till I would have her hold it till at least December, <clears throat> maybe the Rumble. But because you need to have some long reigns. Charlotte needs to be nowhere near that championship. She doesn't need to be holding it again. That's what. It, that's my opinion. So then we have Morrison and Miz do a bad comedy. He has dripped sunglasses. Morrison does. Morrison then says he's going to go convince the Lumberjacks to be on their side. Okay. That seems a bit odd. Okay. Then, um, you know, the doctor won't clear Dominic. So Ray has to go it alone against Ziggler and Rude. Smackdown tag titles. Good match, but here's the problem. Went on a bit long. You have a certain window when you're doing a handicap match with somebody to come in a little bit later. And nothing beats experience that Ziggler, you know, that Cole said about Ziggler beating, you know, countering Ray. Ray's been around since the early 90s. Ziggler has been around since, what, 2005? 2005, 2006, something like that. I mean, there was a spirit squad. I'm sure he wrestled before. But still, Ray's got him beat by a while. Michael Cole, you're really bad at your job. So then we get a two-on-one on Ray forever, forever, which I got, but it went on forever. Dominic shows up, eventually gets tagged, and then beat up. So eventually they do a big old melee. Ray takes uh, Ziggler on outside, uh, Sunset Flip or Code Red variation into the barricade. And then uh, Dominic using his real father's finishing maneuver, the Frog Splash, Eddie Guerrero. I'm your poppy. And gets a victory. One, two, three. Okay. Fine. Ray and Dominic won. Why didn't you do this on Father's Day? Should have done it on Father's Day. I don't understand why they didn't. Because it would have been cool. Because Hell in a Cell is going to be taking place on Father's Day, apparently. <laughs> why didn't you just do it then? Would have been a cool moment. I, I mean, w watch them now have Dominic turn on Ray, and then, you know, they have a father-son match, because that worked out so well for David and Ric Flair. Cool if they won the tag titles, but I think they should have waited for Father's Day. Anyway, we get an Army of the Dead plug. Can I just say right now, by the way, Morrison was looking for lumberjacks and finds the zombies. Oh no. Um, Army of the Dead plug. Cool. The movie kind of looks like shit. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I mean, it looks like they put a lot of money into it. It just looks like shit. So then uh, Jimmy wants Jay to team up with him. Oh, hi, Roman. Standing five feet off camera. We didn't see you there. Even though we were clearly looking. Oh, hi, Roman. We're going to pretend like you're not there because the camera's focused on us. Oh, hi, Tribal Chief. God, this was so badly shot. And then, okay, we get, um... Whew, we get Miz and Morrison making their entrance. And then Damian Priest makes his entrance. Cool, Damian Priest looks like a star. Too bad Damian Priest, uh, his 2021, after making the most out of that Bad Bunny situation. And Bad Bunny was there for everything. He worked hard, he trained hard that match. One of my favorite matches of the year because it exceeded my expectations. Everybody worked hard. Miz and Morrison bounced like a Super Bowl for him. And Damien Priest really did make that work. I'm going to write him off for the rest of the goddamn year. In fact, let's see. So it's a Damien Priest versus Miz zombie lumberjack match. 
And I want to say that anybody that, you know, put this together deserves the worst kind of year. They deserve the worst 2021. You are not wrestling fans. You hate wrestling fans if you put this shit on there. And if you guys like it, fan-fucking-tastic. Great. Good. Good. I didn't. And I'll tell you why I didn't fucking like it. This wasn't necessary. What did this do for Damian Priest? What did this do for The Miz? And I killed The Miz when he won the WWE Championship when he cashed in Money in the Bank because they bo botched that whole goddamn thing. Why in the world did they make this a zombie lumberjack match? Oh, Netflix probably gave him a huge payday. Or maybe they did it for Batista. Maybe Batista just said he was going to Batista bomb Bruce if Vince didn't do this. He should have let him Batista bomb Bruce because nobody likes Bruce Pritchard. If you think you do, you're wrong. Everyone's entitled to their opinion, but in this case, your opinion is wrong. In all seriousness, if you like Bruce Pritchard, that's fine. But he's a goddamn idiot and he deserves every bit of verbal scorn he gets. Worst match of the year. Maybe except the Alexa Orton thing at Fastlane. This and the Alexa, Lily, Fiend stuff, and I mean on camera. I want to say right now quickly, I hope Bray takes whatever time away he needs, works on himself. I know losing Brody Lee was tough on him, and I hope he can come back. Whenever he comes back, good for him. May hate the character, don't hate the person. This was atrocious. This was fucking goddamn atrocious. Who was this for? Who honestly was this for? This was some of the worst television and, I mean, I know it's supposed to be on pay-per-view, but it's not on pay-per-view. This is the, you know, some of the deadest cock stuff I've seen on the internet. Actually, the second most dead stuff I've seen on a cock. You don't want to know about the first. Always delete your search history. And they're beating up zombies. Like, they're beating up goddamn zombies. And then Miz at one point, Miz and Priest are fighting them off. Morrison gets dragged down, you know, behind, like, the barricade and seemingly eaten. So, I guess, I guess... Ty Valkyrie, a.k.a. Frank and Monet, suddenly single? The dog is going to be pissed off when he realizes that, you know, their uh, their human dad isn't coming home, so great job there, zombies. This was stupid. And people say, oh, the ECW zombie should have come out. Unfortunately, that, that guy, the guy who portrayed him died several years ago, which is a shame. Real shame. Real shame. That's the one thing he did on nationwide TV uh, for wrestling that people will remember. I mean, I don't know who the hell the guy was, but it's terrible he died. But, yeah, Morrison gets eaten by zombies, and then Priest wins, and just, this killed the show. There was some really high-level work after this, but this was a black hole of shit. This is some of the worst programming that WWE has put on, and that covers a whole goddamn lot of ground. This is as bad as the Haunted House of Terror shit, and I can tell you right now, maybe they wouldn't have done this if there had been a crowd there. If they had done this shit and there had been a crowd there, guess what? Half the crowd would have walked out. And since they weren't drawing, you know, more than half a goddamn arena for their Raw and SmackDown tapings, guess what? That would have meant they would have been performing in front of no people. So maybe they should just stick doing tapings in the Thunderdome. They're going to apparently do their pay-per-views until SummerSlam in the Thunderdome. Which is fine. Everybody can get back to touring. But they're going to put on stuff like this, even if you have great, a couple great matches before, even if one went a little bit long, and you have three great matches afterwards, even if you have that stuff. If you have something like this, people are going to tune out. AEW can do bad shit like that. You know, they did the whole thing with the exploding barbed wire death match, and it was bullshit. New Japan's done bad stuff like the Great Okan, and really trying hard with the Great Okan, and that freaking ladder match that was absolutely atrocious. And a bunch of other stuff. And every wrestling company is trying to do different things. And I understand since they don't have an audience, they're doing what they can. This isn't entertainment. And all WWE is going to do is drive down interest. And they're making money. They're making shit tons of money. But they just cut the legs out from under their wrestlers by doing shit like this. And it was terrible. It was fucking terrible. Who was this for? Like, the zombies, I'm not touching you, him, you know, Miz to death. So they did this to Miz and were pawing at him in air. Yeah, so that's a nice... It's a zombie massage. Everybody zombie massage. Everybody do the zombie stomp. And if you get that reference, goddamn, you are a crazier fan than I am. This... I just... I seriously wish that, you know, whoever greenlit this... If Bruce Pritchard came up with this, he deserved to be chased into a goddamn swamp of gators. Vince, uh, Vince McMahon deserves to not make a goddamn dime more from wrestling, even though he will, until the day he dies, and then some. This was so bad. Did it ruin the show for me? Kinda, even though I am gonna have to pray some stuff afterwards. This was bad. So goddamn bad. One, of, It's gonna be in my top five of worst things of the year. And there's some AEW stuff that's there, too. This 
was horrendous. WWE should know better. They apparently just don't care. And they just want to piss on their talents and shit on the fans that have stuck around with them since, you know, the 80s or 90s. So, good job. Is it the worst thing that's ever happened? Was it the worst pay-per-view ever? No. But was it one of the worst things that happened on pay-per-view in a while? Oh, fuck yes. So, Jimmy called Jay Reigns' his bitch. Hell in a Cell is in June. Not money in the bank. Oh, by the way, yeah, as far as that uh, zombie lumberjack match. So... Bianca and Bailey, SmackDown Women's Championship. This is where I'm going to get a little bit quicker here because I'm going to say the next three, the last three matches you should watch. The fake EST chance. They really shouldn't do the fake EST chance. It's ridiculous. They did good shit. Just a shame they had to follow that uh, zombie lumberjack match. These women are talented. They told a really good story. Bailey kept going after Bianca's hair. Um, and, you know, there was some really, really good stuff. Good submission work, good strikes, good, you know, good, uh, you know, good high flying, you know, when it was done. These two women can do some really good stuff. Real shame these women had to follow that fucking horse shit. Bianca won by a hair roll-up, despite the fact her hair kept getting focused on. Bit of a botch there. People may argue that Michael Cole blew the goddamn call. To be fair, it was such a botch three count. I'm not going to blame Michael Cole here. There's plenty of more shit to blame Michael Cole for. Bailey then should have made Cole's pen disappear, if you fucking know what I mean. Michael Cole is really bad at his job. After just saying that I wasn't going to rip on him for that, I'm not going to rip on him for botching that. But he is really bad at his job. Oh, he may have been screaming in his goddamn ear. I'm going to fucking quit. Fucking leave. He had to have made enough goddamn money by this point. Be a producer. Be something. Fox needs a mandate that he's off commentary because he's terrible. JR in AEW is better. JR doesn't give a shit 95% of the time. So, Bailey and Bianca. Good shit. Really good shit. Just a shame it had to follow that zombie lumberjack match. Drew versus Lashley versus Braun. Triple threat match for the WWE title. Shame these two had to follow the women that had to follow that zombie lumberjack match. This is going to be a recurring theme because zombie lumberjack match. Braun's involvement was to take the pin. Thankfully, this was the case. So, yeah, everybody just decided, okay, nobody here, you know, just screens. We're going to do big man shit and we're going to have big men diving and doing big man stuff. And big man, big man, smashy, smashy. And it was a good match. Despite the fact that Braun was involved, it was a pretty good match. Lashley got sent through the LED board, and I'm going to tell you right now, attacks at the entranceway feel so staged to me. Michinoku driver to Braun from Drew, holy shit. Holy shit, that was good stuff. Table bomb, oh no, not the announcer's table. And then spear to Braun, Lashley comes back in and throws Drew out and gets the spear, one, two, three. Cool. Good stuff. Really good stuff, just a shame it had to follow the zombie lumberjack match. So this summer is going to be hot as hell. Ho, oh, Michael Cole, I fucking hate you. Can you do the Mick Foley bump, please? Just put them on a crash pad. They do everything on crash pads now. AEW does stuff on crash pads. Anyway, Cesaro versus Reigns with Heyman, Universal Championship. Okay, so uh, Reigns said to Jay, no, you stay back here. I don't want to deal with you. And uh, Roman has main evented half a dozen WrestleManias. 31, 32, 33, 34, 37. That is five. Michael Cole, in addition to being unable to do commentary, can't do math. Michael Cole fucking sucks at his job. So, um, why couldn't Cole's mic cut out? Because at one point, um, McAfee's headset cut out. McAfee did pretty good here. The left arm is Cesaro. Oh, wait, it's the right arm. So he doesn't know anatomy, math, or how to do commentary. Michael Cole fucking sucks. So, um, well, they did some good shit, but they also had to follow the match. They had to follow the match to follow the zombie lumberjack match. This is a good main event. Really good main event. I like storytelling. Cesaro having the left arm hurt. I actually thought he might have torn something. I hope he didn't because it was really red and really dented. So hopefully he's all right. But they did near falls. You know, Roman trash talking. Cesaro kept battling back. Guillotine. We got the sharpshooter by Cesaro. You know, we got the cross base. We got broken up. Guillotine. And man, let me tell you right now. When you grip another man's swollen, veiny head hard enough and he turns purple, he's going to pass out as you choke on, as you choke out his swollen, veiny head. Or choke on his swollen, veiny head. I'm not here to kink shame you much. And Roman Reigns wins. And then Jay, um, that, really good stuff. Cesaro looked strong in defeat. Good shit. Too bad they haven't done shit like this with Cesaro for years. Because Cesaro's really good. Jay shows up and honors Reigns and then attacks Cesaro. And then Rollins shows up in the suit so loud that people on the space station goddamn heard it. And then attacks Cesaro and then chair to the arm and there we go. So, really, really good, you know, really good championship matches. But, zombie... Lumberjack match 
I have written off Damian Priest for the rest of the year, which is a shame. Maybe Damian Priest will have a better 2022, because this 2021 is fucking washed. They killed anything that he did, you know, up to this point. Damn shame. Anyway, agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritlin. I'll see you soon.